Well, welcome. Tonight, we're going to talk about an area that we all see and we all wonder what's going on. And we all use it, if you have kids especially, the Parks Department and what they do because they're involved in areas that we don't really even know they are involved in. But we know if it doesn't get done, if the grass doesn't get cut, we know right away. Why don't we start with an introduction? So I'm Jim Asm. I'm the uh, Parks and Recreation Administrator. Um, I've been with the department now for 22 years and I've been in this position for the past five years. Has it gone by that fast? Yeah, yeah. So now let's start off the Parks Department. What does it do? Because people don't understand how many places you got your fingers. Yeah, so we maintain basically most of the green grass you see all over town. So uh, between the school school departments, uh, we mow all the fields and grounds there, um, along with uh, maintaining the um, bushes and things like that. You know, a few times a year, trimming the bushes down. Uh, we help out with the principals if they have any special requests. Uh, we'll put it on the schedule to help out them, um, along with all our parks. So you got town parks, Plains Park, Rosenfelt, uh, Rosine and Glazy, the baseball fields there, Vadalato, Fino Field, um, Maha Court, um, Calzone Park, Draper Park, Fruit Street, uh, Depot, uh, Vernon Grove Field. You know, so there's a number of fields, and I'm sure I'm forgetting a few. Plus, we, we maintain the, um, the, the trail, the uh, Charles River bike trail. So uh, we stay busy. Louisa Lake, um, where there's been a bunch of upgrades. Now, the cast of thousands, how big is the Parks Department? Well, we have six, six full-time workers and myself, and uh, we have six seasonal uh, call, we, call, we call college kids that come in and work for us uh, for about two and a half, three months out of the summer. And then we have our pool workers that will be put back into business as soon as our pool opens in the next couple of weeks, which would be nice. So the end of June, you're hoping the pool opens? Yeah, right now we're on schedule uh, doing the electricity this week. Um, National Grid's coming in on Wednesday. Um, they're planning on hydro seeding all the areas, the construction areas on Wednesday, which is going to be our biggest challenge because it's not the best time to seed. But we're hoping with, you know, some water and some the muggy warm weather, it helps out with the growing. And um, I thought you're supposed to seed in the fall. Yeah, unless you have a construction project that's finishing in in June. <laughs> you know, in in order to you know, get something down, we had to do it at this time. And it will grow. It just might not be as full as next year. But Will you rehide your seed in the fall? or? Yeah, we probably will uh, to help out with that. And um, Well, I remember the hydro seed. When we did our house in Maryland, they came and hydro seeded. And it immediately felt good because they put green dye or newspaper in the squirting thing. Yep, yep. So you looked out, and all of a sudden you went from brown to green. Right. But you if, couldn't really walk on it. No, the appearance is a little better, but it won't be it won't be ideal. But uh, everything else is coming along great with the pool, the buildings. They're just finishing up the siding. All the insides have been done for the last week or so. Um, it's so what it's did we way. end up with? We ended up with a pool that's different than the pool we had. Yeah, so we basically, if you remember how the old pool was, we have two-thirds of that now that is water related and then the other third is like a picnic area uh, we added a whole new pump uh, filtration system that is actually in existence where the old pump that was underground the old filtration system that was underground we built right on top of that yeah. and then the bathrooms and showers that were normally in the back side near Vadalato are now moved to the front of the facility uh, coming from the parking lot. Uh, so, so what yeah. happened to the old bathhouse? We'll use that for storage, and eventually we'd like to use it for Vadalato for baseball games. They could use it because it will be separated from the pool, uh, but still utilized by the pool. Um, 
so they could use that for bathrooms and we'd be able to eliminate some of our porta johns we have throughout some of the parks. That would be nice. Yeah. Now the pool itself, I love the old pool because it started out at what, six inches deep? Yeah. So you could take your grandkids down there and when we were kids you grew up. I'll never forget you became an adult when you could swim across that deep, deep part. Yeah. Which we thought was hundreds of feet deep. Yeah, about five feet. Yeah, I was going to say, then we learned that it was under six feet deep in the deepest part. Right. So we have, uh, it's it's sort of the same setup. Uh, you you gradually, uh, gradually gets deeper with the same. Um, so it does start. It starts, yeah, ankle deep. Ankle deep. Yeah. And it has a, so a few spray features as you walk in too, which the kids will like. Yeah. Um, and then obviously we added the splash pad, which is going to be a, a big. Is there a place for people to swim laps? Yep. So there's four four lap uh, lanes that are well, actually huge. marked out. Of, yeah, lap lanes now, so they could use that for um, you know doing laps and um, you know you and also swim in the sections. We, all the lanes are removable, so we can remove them. If you want to keep one lane or two lanes and take two out, that would allow a little more swimming room. But at least people can swim. I I always watch people swim laps. Yeah. My darling bride would get me to go to the pool. I'd sit in a corner and watch her do laps. Right. That was my exercise for the day. Yeah. And it's something we're looking into for the future, but we'd like to bring swim lessons back. Oh, that would be nice. You know, so that would be something that we'd look into and see how we can work that in but um you know for years it was the rotary club that was you know sponsoring that and you know maybe someone else would step up and possibly do that or we'll have to work it into our uh slowly grown budget <laughs> how do you answer when people say why do we need the pheno pool we got casey pool well all you know we when we got the three de different designs of the, and I started back in 2018 with the feasibility study that had started before I took this position and I sort of just followed up with it. And we had a few different designs and this design fit the needs of who uses the pool. Uh, we have a lot of parents with younger kids and grandparents with their grandkids that go to that pool. And that's who our target, you know, our, target group was and the commissioners had looked at this design and felt you know it, it's pretty similar to the other pool with the way it's set up but also adding the splash pad feature is yeah but even the pool itself Casey pool never had a tree yeah I don't know if it's do you only want the leaves falling in or right whatever the reason and that is a challenge the, the challenge keeping the clean you know every day um, it's going to be, you know, having to keep that deck clean. And even with the trees that, and the trimming that we did on the trees, there's still plenty of shaded areas in that area. Um, and we also added a few more shade features that are on the pool deck itself, uh, it, which would be nice. But that was always the wonderful part is you could take a picnic basket, yep. take your picnic basket, go down there, lay down a blanket, and spend the day. Right. Couldn't really do that at Casey. It got, no. felt too hot. Yeah. Without shade, it just felt uncomfortable. Right. And it seems like an economic way. I mean, with budgets the way they are, what do we charge somebody to go to the Fino pool? Well, we're going to go up a little bit. It used to be a dollar per kid. Now it's going to be three. And uh, adults um, are going to be five for residents and seven for non-residents. Okay, so the residents who paid for it do get a break. Right. And then you also you also have um, an opportunity for season passes, which will have those prices listed too, which is a substantial savings. If you plan on going to the pool a couple times a week, it's well worth it, and you will save money. So uh, there are people that use those too. But what are you talking about, 100 bucks? Uh, for residents, I think it was... And I don't have it off. It's off the top of my head. I think it was 150. Still, and for a, a summer for, pass. Right. 150 bucks. Yeah, if you're going with an adult for five and, you know, two kids, that's $11, you know, right off the bat. So well, I'm just thinking, if, 
you know, if I ten go to visits, the movies, you're over that. Yeah. If I go to the movies, it's fifty bucks for the tickets before I spend money on popcorn and right. snacks. Right. So ha- charging me a hundred fifty for a summer, right, seems like a good way of doing it. Yep. And the splash pad alone, I think, is going to be a huge feature that people are going to come just for that. Well, the little kids especially. Oh yeah, they'll love it. And it seems like. I'd rather be watching them on the splash pad so I don't have to worry about them in the pool. Yeah. So you got new bathrooms. Will that will those be open for the Fino Field Annex people or Yeah, so the plan is we have um automatic locks on those. So when the pool is closed, the back side of the pool will be uh the back side of those that bathhouse will be closed off. So no one will have access for that with the pools closed, but we're able to use the bathrooms for the people on the trail and the people at oh. the at the annex. So um, and that will last as long as people are respecting it. Um, once once there's any issues down there, um, how it would work is if we choose the time to be eight o'clock at night, the bathrooms will lock. If you're inside and they lock, you'll be able to get out, but no one else will be able to get back in. Um, it's sort of another way of, you know, making it a multi-use purpose, you know, that we can use it and eliminate some of the porta johns that we use down there. Well, I certainly hope people respect it because I remember when the um, Milford Hopedale Soccer Association put up fifty grand to do the woodland, the yep, old woodland right. field. Those bathrooms there. Yeah. Those bathrooms were wonderful, yep. but then all of a sudden. People abused them, and yeah. all of a sudden the porta parties were back. And that's what we don't want. So that will be something we'll monitor, and it will be a decision um, you know, within the first few weeks, I'm sure, that we'll see if that's going to work. Um, otherwise, it will be something that we open up for special events that we may have at the annex, that they're monitored you know, during that event, and then we lock them up. It will be sort of the same thing that we do up at Town Park, I think, too. Yeah, because you have the same issue. Yep. So how big is this splash pad? It's about a third of what the pool was. So it's that big. Yeah, it's a good size. It has um, has four or five features plus some spray deck things that spray up and yeah, it's it's nice. They have a whale tail that sort of showers water down and like a daisy or a flower that you know and some buckets that dump water on you and stuff, fill up and dump water. How's, here we go with the hard question. How's the budget look? We're right there. Um, starting to get the numbers in now. We're making some final payments on it, so I think it's going to be close. But it, it did. we did have some change orders. And, uh, Surprise. It's expected. You know, we had some fencing, um, you know, added different fencing that we needed to take care of instead of – you know, you're doing three sides of the fence. But for whatever reason, the fourth side wasn't included. So, <laughs> and that's on the Vadalato side. So I think it was all part of with the playground that we have planned for there. Um, where I'm actually going for a um, disability grant uh, that I'm applying for this week uh, for hopefully being awarded $250,000 in November, which would go a long way to help with that playground. So. It's amazing because I remember when we first started talking about playground budgets, the PTOs would do fundraisers for thirty grand and put in a brand new playground. Yeah, they did it at Rosenfeld. The Rosenfeld and all of a sudden, the memorial came up. It was a hundred and fifty. Yeah, it was like gulp. Yeah, this one's about three hundred. The one we were looking at, and and to make it compliant, so the the all inclusive was important for this playground because we really don't have an all-inclusive playground. So the pouring padding is big money um, as opposed to the matting and the wood chips. But when you say we don't have an all-inclusive? Well, all-inclusive for the parks. Uh, the oh. school the school so has. I was going to say, it, yeah. what happened to the schools? Yeah, the schools have them. Okay. Um, you know, but the general the town one that they Basically compared to the one that the padding that was put in at Brookside just recently. That's what I think you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, but for the for the town parks, we've always been wood chips. You know, I started adding the ADA matting, which is a step down from the rubber, but it still makes it compliant that you can 
access it with a wheelchair or you know um, from different areas of the park and and different features in the playground so well no matter what I mean it sounds like blasphemy coming from a member of the fincom you got to take care of all the kids right you know it's cheaper to do wood chips it's cheaper but you're eliminating the access for a lot of our kids right and that you can't have no nope. and we're not done we have more there's <laughs> there's other you know there's other playgrounds and stuff that need assistance in the in the town we are fortunate at tank field to get a playground that got put right up new swings and stuff and it was a quick fix but it was donated by a um, you know a group of like four different uh, groups and businesses that you know paid for that and we just had to install it you know so it was you know things like that help go a long way in helping us get these things done yeah we don't have time to talk about tank field tonight but right please don't forget parking right yeah because I get scared when there were baseball games there and all right and you see all the cars lined up around the street on Congress and yeah, West we're working Island. with the we're working with the water department now on some different ideas that we could do up there. Well, it should be easier now that it's all owned by the town. Right. You know, it's no longer fighting the water company because that was my big gripe. Is I'm scared to death. I crawl through there at a blazing five miles an hour. Yeah. Because you just you never know. You're waiting for some little critter, some little kid to come running between the cars. Right. But hopefully that'll get dealt with in the future years. Now, you keep talking about Town Park, so let's talk about Town Park. Yeah, so Town Park's in its final stages for planning. Uh, we went to the planning board last week, got the uh, final approvals uh, that we needed to get through them. Now, wait a minute. Yeah. I drove by Town Park. I was going to ask you, how far into the project are uh, we? Right. Because <laughs> so I saw yeah. a lot, it looks like a lot of work's been done. Yeah, so we decided in the winter uh, where most of the courts weren't usable anyways, and they weren't being used that we could sort of get a jump on the project thinking that we would be in there in April and May. Um, so we took down all the fencing, ripped out all the courts, and we did that through the Parks Department and the Highway Department. So we were able to do that work in-house. So when you say we, sorry to interrupt, yep. this is not contractors that you're paying. No, no, we, we did it all within in-house. So it was the Highway and the Parks Department sort of collaborating together to get it done. And... Um, you know, in turn, we get a couple thousand dollars in metal. You know, we put all the metal in the dumpsters, and we got that money, you know, to put towards the project. So you didn't have to pay to have it hauled away? Nope. That's just, good. Yeah, we had a company come in, and they take a short fee, you know, $300 or something for the dumpster, and we we got the, you know, money for the metal. So... That was a, a big step in the right direction, and, you know, it was, you know, play, we were sort of planning April, May to get everything going, but, you know, things get in the way, and, you know, if you say April, May, you usually mean June. But now, if you haven't gone out to bid yet, and you did a bunch of work in-house, yeah. does that get factored in when they do their bids? Yeah, so that, and speaking with the architect, that he sort of suggested we do that if we can, because it's less... It's going to be less on the price. You know, they might come in and charge us whatever, you know, ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000, and we did it in, you know, a week's time and got it done ourselves. You know, so that, that definitely helps in the final stage, you know, uh, final planning. They won't have to do that. It's all done for them. Um, and then, so describe Town Park, the new Town Park. So the new Town Park is pretty much the same layout as what it was we wanted to keep the layout as close to the old layout as possible so the walkways are 90 percent the same there's a couple that have some different curves and ada compliancy at the building and stuff but other than that they're staying in pretty much the same place we are making them eight feet wide uh, that's to assist with our trucks because we when we are maintaining stuff or working on stuff up there we drive on to the pathways it's the same as plains park that you had to do. right and that that helps out um and it doesn't leave the ruts on the sides like we see now you know and those are things that when those ruts happen it's not something 
we're not a big enough department where we can go up there and fix it that next day. You know, that's something that, you know, we have to plan for to fix, and we'd be doing it constantly. So I think the eight-feet walkways are going to help a lot in that respect. Um, what are they, six foot now? They're about five. Oh. Yeah. So we're, at, we're, adding, we're adding about three feet. And then um, the bandstand's going to get a little upgrade. Um, it's staying as is, but we're adding to the stage, and we're adding a little um, roof, um, extended roof out. If you've gone to band concerts, you see the jazz bands and stuff up Tuesday there. Tuesday night, Claflin Hill. Yeah, they're pretty crammed in there. This is going to give them a little more space, even with any of the you know five and six you know member bands that play there. It's just going to give them more space, and um, we thought it would be a, a good, you know, e an easy fix. So the people who go to Town Park for Claflin Hill and related activities yep. are going to still be able to do that? Yes. Oh, but this, this season will not be. This season they'll be at Plains Park. Oh. So during, so during COVID, we switched to Plains Park because of the spacing. There was more spacing, and we actually made grids during COVID, you know, uh, 10 by 10 foot squares that families could go and then they could stay separated from other families. And it worked out really well. And uh, Paul Serapine, you know, had mentioned that if, if we had to, we could go down there again. And I said, yeah, that would absolutely work. And he's fine with it. The pavilion's a great space for them and has electricity and everything so that's kind of elevated yep and the parking will be plenty and they'll have plenty of space grass space for people i hadn't so. thought about that boy the parking's gonna be a lot easier yep down at plains park right unless there's a soccer game or a lacrosse game. yeah and we were hoping well with the the schedule how it working now we have um june i got it today it's june 13th June thirteenth, putting out the bid. June twentieth, the plans will be released for the people who are bidding. And then we'll they'll have about three weeks after that to get their bids in. So it looks like July eleventh would be when they would be submitting the bids. And then we would be opening the bids then to decide which contractor will get the job. So if you decide third week, fourth week of July, when would they actually start to work? They would start, we would hope immediately. Oh, that really? That would all be part of it, yeah. So that would be part of uh, the big going out. We'll put a timeline on that. And then you're talking two and a half, three months of a project. So that we, fast. We, yeah, so we were, hoping, we were hoping to have it done by the end of August, but it looks like we're going to be going into September now. Yeah, but still, that's pretty quick. Yeah, yeah, it's, because it's all courts, fencing, you know, electrical, we're putting new lights in. Um, you know, other than that, besides the building, there really isn't, there's all all the piping for the buildings existing. So, so the no band new. stands up in the corner. Yep. The, I guess that's the north corner. Right. What happened to the basketball courts? So the basketball court are being shifted to where the double tennis court used to be. Oh, okay. So we're adding an extra basketball court. We're taking that basketball court and eliminating it, making some more grass space, but there will also be walkways with picnic tables and benches within that space. Um, that can be utilized for just going out to sit and have lunch where the teachers may go out or the band concerts if you're well, going. Well, families on weekends right? can just go and, sit. Yep. And then also for the softball field, if there's games, you can sit out there and see the game, you know, fine. So what happened to the pickleball courts? So the pickleball courts, so the three tennis courts that used to be along um, Congress, between the walkway and Congress, those are staying in the exact same spot. Two of them will be all tennis, and one will be four pickleball courts. So four pickleball courts fit within one. And, you know, during town meeting, we had talked about the noise, and, you know, you see it everywhere about the noise. I'm going to create problem but i gotta ask you yeah when i think of old people like me playing tennis or pickleball versus a bunch of young bucks or young girls playing basketball i can't imagine i make more noise than the teenagers 
Right, right. <laughs> I, I, yeah. It just it hit me to sit there and say, okay, right. so you got a bunch of 50-year-olds or older right. playing pickleball, and that's the noise they're worried about? Well, it's more the courts and the paddles. I mean, the balls and the paddles that are used. I mean, it's a knock, knock, knock. Yes, but the unique side about our courts is that it's four courts as opposed to some of these facilities are 12, 16, 32 courts. So when you have courts of that number, the noise is substantially. And that's, this is some of the things you see in the different towns around that have some pickleball noise issues. Most of them have 12 or more courts. Where we have four courts. Holy moly. It's a big difference. I mean, that's a lot of space. Yeah, yeah. So you figure we have one court that we're utilizing for four pickleball courts. You know, so put four, you know, you do the math. <laughs> it's, well, no, you, know, no, no, you no, go 32, you have an eight of those courts all in one area. That can, that can definitely have a sound issue. And that's just open to the public. Yes. You're so right. it'll be monitored. So what we had said at town meeting, we would monitor the times. So there will be times uh, listed, like on weekends. You won't be going in there at 6 o'clock to be playing pickleball. You know, uh, we'll have probably an 8.30, 9 o'clock start on weekends um, and weekdays for that matter. But it's first come, first served? Yep, first come, first served. There's a waiting area that's part of the um, design. So if you get there and someone's Is there playing, any time limit, Jim? Like, I get there we, at 9 we o'clock. We didn't put any time limit. If, if we see that it's getting dominated by certain groups, we may need to. But we, we haven't uh, really discussed that. It's sort of like we're going to see how it works out because it is popular. And we do have a lot of people that have contacted me to ask us about pickleball courts and things. So we know people are going to use it. Um, and, you know, the, part of the reason why we limited from five tennis courts to two was basketballs, you know, is always filled down there. So we figured by adding another basketball court, that's going to help with that. We also have street hockey that will be able to be utilized oh, cool. within those courts. And the design is actually with hockey boards and fencing. Um, Franklin has a similar um, Well, with the tennis courts, you're only – a half a mile, a mile away from the high school. Right, sports. and the high school has them. So the other part was, you know, some towns use the same nets and put the same lines on tennis courts. And all I heard was bad stories about tennis players being upset because pickleball court, you know, pickleball players were using the tennis courts when they wanted to use the tennis courts. So this way, pickleball will have their own courts. Tennis will have their own courts. And it will eliminate some of the tennis players being upset. So what they do is they have a tennis court, yes, and then a different colored lines, sort of like the turf fields, yes, for pickleball. But it's my court. If I choose to play pickleball, I don't right. play pickleball. But more so, they wanted to play tennis, and the court wasn't available because pickleball is being played on it. Well, you could say the same thing if the pickleballers. Right, and you could say it for basketball if there's I mean, street hockey and it's. Oh, basketball if they're playing futsal. Right. And we'll also be rededicating the Chili Fabata monument that was put back um, at the old basketball court. We'll be rededicating that at the new courts. What's that? The Chili Fabata, um, back when they did the courts, uh, I'm thinking it was back in. 89, 90 maybe. They had dedicated that for, to Chili Fabata for all his work throughout, you know, the basketball uh, community. And um, I actually spoke to his daughter and let her know that we'll be moving that monument up to the other courts and to invite her and the family to nice. dedicate it. So as I'm thinking, envisioning it, I've got the bandstand up in the north corner walk down I have the new courts to your right will be the tennis and the pickleball and then you go down a little bit further towards the playground you'll have the double basketball court and then the playground then the playground and then coming back up the building will be in the same place we're adding to the building so what adding. is that building what is it brick 
No, but what is it That's used bathrooms, for? bathrooms and storage right now. I never knew there were bathrooms in there. Yeah, so they don't get utilized except for when there's a tournament or something like that. Okay. Um, and they're, they're in need of now restoring. Now, the, the baseball field stays the same? Baseball field will stay the same. If there is some added money, we're going to do some improvements to the backstop fencing. But that would be sort of like an added bonus if there's additional money left over. What do you improve on backstop fencing? Replacing it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's, say it's improve it. Yeah, yeah. The posts are in good shape. They're just older. The posts are solid. They're straight. It's the chain link. You know. But has it ever been changed? I mean, uh, that, not recently. Probably back in the '90s when they did some work at the park before. I was going to say it's got to be 20 years or more. Yeah, and that's part of. I, we brought that to the finance committee that we want to look into having that part of our capital um, because there's so much fencing within the parks to do it within our budget's tough so we decided to add it to our capital uh, improvements and then we can you know do so much sort of like we were doing with the parking lots you know, we'll talk about that next that done. yeah yeah the next couple of years on capital yeah looks with the high school coming on board and seven to eight million dollars a year of interest, yep. that's going to eat up any surpluses we have. But if it's always found a way, right? The I guess it's called the softball field. It's still got a ski slope incline, or has that been leveled out? For the softball field at Town Park? Yeah. No, it's been leveled out. We've done work. Because I was. Oh, eighth you, grade. You're talking about that at, at third baseline? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's come up some. But it was, or it's settled some. Well, it always settled, but it yeah. used to like, whoa. Yeah. Like a ski slope down there. Right. And we're not doing anything to that. Uh, the softball, softball, youth softball uh, a few years back uh, donated some money to do the fencing over. So we had that done and added some gates and stuff on the other side. The highway department did some wall work. Uh, where we had some drainage issues. So that was all, all done in the last couple of years. We'll probably do some upgrades to the dugouts. Um, kids tend to climb on them and rip off the shingles. So we're, we we got to replace some of those, and some of the boards need to be replaced. But that's things we can do in-house. Yeah, but that's normal. I mean... Yeah. Well, it's not normal, but it's... No, but I mean... We you can get, expect it. You expect it. <laughs> yes. As much as you don't want kids to be kids, yep. you know, Fino Field dugouts probably last a lot longer because they're inside a guarded fence. Right. Cool. So now you're going to get all this done by September? That's the, the plan is the end of September right now because they set a solid two and a half, three months. We were hoping to have the last band concert there, but that's sort of not looking realistic now. Uh, we were hoping that would be... Yeah, but as long as you have a place for the band concert. Right, and we would still like to have an event, um, a grand opening event, as long as October doesn't fall into some, you know, cool... It's going to be cooler regardless. Yeah, but, but even if you have it in the spring. Yeah, I would like to get it... If, if everything's done and it, and it looks It would be nice to have it in September, October, but yeah. if it's going to be freezing and snowing... Right, right. But we're hoping the... You know, that's not the case where we can... Now, the Town Park baseball field, yeah. that's not just used for baseball anymore, right? No, we, we use it for emergency purposes for um, soccer overflow. So at Plains Park, if the field's wet and we're able to get it up at Town Park, or, um, for instance, they're supposed to use the high school turf for a game and there's graduation, they need an added field, we'll, we'll line that field for them to use at Town Park. And also the middle school uses it for gym classes. They use it for um, their soccer team in the, in the fall. Um, track and field uses it. They have a, you know, they'll use it for, um, you know, different things. And the schools use it for, you know, the gym classes for kickball and whatever else they may do, uh, wiffle ball. And now I got to ask you, um, you say you line the fields. Yes. Days are gone when Scotty and Paul Browser were out there with a paintbrush. Yeah, yeah. So we're, didn't we, we buy an a, automated yeah, contraption? Turf, turf tank robot, and it's been a, a great addition to the department. I was going to ask. Cause so I said six, so we actually have seven. 
but it still takes it still takes a person to run it, yeah. uh, but it's one person as opposed to two or three, um, and it's been doing great. It's uh, and it's straight. Yeah, the lines are straight. Uh, you do a soccer field in twenty minutes, twenty three minutes. Wow, painted. Um, it stays in the program inside the tablet, so you just go to the field, you set up the GPS tower, and go. A few surrounded towns got it after us. Uh, Bellingham has one now. What does it cost to line a field? Is it ten bucks, a hundred bucks? Well, if you're doing so, the the everything's uh, mixed with water, so we're paying a hundred dollars for a jug of paint, unmixed. And then we'll mix that into uh, three times that. So for a hundred bucks, you you know three times that you're getting a number of fields painted. Yeah, but th that's what I'm saying. Is it one field per jug? No. Two fields. No, that's what I'm saying. So nine, you know, one big jug, which is five gallons mixed, would get three soccer fields done, as opposed to what we were doing before, twelve gallons. You know, so we're we're we've cut that we've cut that paint in half. You know, for but you've also cut the labor, and, and we cut the. We, I'm able to put other people in, you know, in different spots as opposed to, you know, spending the time because we, you know, in the fall we're we're painting nine to nine to ten soccer fields. Um, we have baseball, softball. We're using that for the foul lines and everything else now. So well, I just remember when I was coaching. No slam against parks. But every once in a while, the lines got a little faded. That must have been before I was there because I, was, was, I was pretty years straight. Ago. Yeah. This was 20 <laughs> So it might, it might have been when I was first coming in. You know, and you could see that they didn't have – Grishani and Scotty and crew couldn't get out there with their paintbrush to no, paint I said it was 18 years too late that this robot came around because <laughs> I, I did those fields for a long time. Now, Fino Field itself – the guarded area. Yes. What do we use that for? Uh, mostly well, the, obviously the high school. Legion. Yeah, high school. This year we used it for Babe Ruth. Uh, Babe Ruth asked to use the field. Um, and we were able to fit them in the schedule. Um, it's within union contract that we need to have a worker there. So we had to charge a fee uh, just to sort of offset that overtime uh, for the worker. Yeah, but we do that in high school. If you want to use the auditorium, right? You got to have the janitors a, a and all janitor, that. Yep. I don't know if you can call them janitor anymore. Maintenance yeah. engineer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, so they were the Babe Ruth, and they loved it. The coaches couldn't say enough about it. Um, that the kids just love being out there. You know, it's a whole different. You know, we were able to give them some night games and stuff, so that works out nice. And well, it's got to be cool for the kids to play in a stadium. Yep, but um, and then there's a few other um, outside senior Ruth, the older guys that have used it for different uh, ball games. You know, depending on the legion, because you know at this point we have baseball, high school baseball is playing on it, and they're using it for practices. They're doing well in the playoffs. They have a game right now, actually, and if they continue to do well, then the. the you know, there's no time in between them and Legion. So we, we're trying to do field repairs and stuff before Legion gets in there, um, which is a little challenging at times, but we make it work. And then in the fall, we're looking to do some more improvements. We have some uh, grant money um, earmarked that we're going to use to start improving some of the fields that we can't do out of our budget. But now, overall... Do we have enough fields for the demand? Um, I think so. It, it's all a matter of scheduling. Well, no, I'm just asking because yeah. when I first came up and went from 6v6 to coaching an 11v11 team, yeah. poor Mike Rashani used to try and squeeze us in. Right. Well, to give you an idea, we, we've added – we've taken soccer out of Plains, uh, out of Fino Field and Pop Warner. Pop Warner is able to use the main field now, and then they use the annex for practice. We have some the goal post that we're going to look to install at the annex. So we did some work to the annex. We improved the irrigation, and we've um, you can improved have the irrigation grass. in the annex. Yeah, 
I thought the floodplain wouldn't allow you to. No, we, we have it in there, and uh, um, we also uh, seeded and top dressed it last year. So the dust bowl's gone. So it's looking pretty good right now. Um, it's only going to get better. And then we're looking to add a full size soccer field with Pop Warner football. So they'll be able to use that for practices and whatnot. So the proper Fino field is used baseball for Babe Ruth High School League. Right. And then any added events we might have, uh, you know, the boosters have used it before, you know, to use the concession stand and yeah. things like that. But um, other than that, yeah, that's it. Because we used to have to put soccer on there or Pop Warner on there. Right. And we have more groups that are reaching out. Um, it's just a matter of scheduling to get them in there. You know, some, uh, you know, semi-pro teams that want to play there. So, you know, there's been talks of possibly putting a fence out in the outfield, you know, to uh, that allow the Legion to have more state tournaments there. Um, Put a fence? Along the outside, so bring the fence in. Oh, okay. Leave the say, existing fence. It doesn't bring, have a fence? No, what bring a fence, fence in. So it's not a... You know, 485 It's not foot. a 500 uh, foot home run? Yeah, you hit it 300 feet and it rolls on another 150. <laughs> yeah, so that's been some discussions we're, you know, we're starting to have now. So with the money that we have for the earmark, this is some of the stuff we're looking at. Yeah, I know there's always been sensitivity for soccer and lacrosse. How's lacrosse doing? We don't deal much with lacrosse. I mean, they use our fields, but we don't line it for them. They use mostly the turf. Uh, youth uses the field up at the up at the high school. They use the practice football field um, in the back. They don't need lines for lacrosse. They haven't uh, asked for them, so I don't know. You know, one year we had we had done like a half arc, you know, for them to have the scoring errors, but I think they use it mostly on the turf. You know, I'm in touch with the coaches just as well, far as... Well, the turf as, has lines. Yeah, just as, right, just as far as scheduling the um, scheduling the grass fields. But we don't have anything to do with the turf field, so... But is it still growing, or...? Yeah. Because I remember when it first came out, it was like soccer. Yeah. You know? When yeah, I, they're still going. The numbers are up. Uh, uh, soccer numbers are, you know, staying steady, too, uh, through the spring. You know, it's a little challenge between the spring because you have so many sports you can jump to, but the fall, the numbers are still are still filling the fields. So, Well, it's amazing because you hear about the danger of specializing. You know, the kid picks one sport. Right. And I got to admit, my daughter's, my oldest was that way. She played 40 weeks a year soccer. Yeah. Didn't leave much time for anything else. No, that's the preference, you know. Different kids want to do different things. So, We tried getting her to try other sports like basketball. Yeah, she'd last five minutes. <laughs> throw a hip check. All She kept throwing hip checks like she did in soccer. Right. And it was like, you can't hit the people. She goes, why? If they don't want to get hit, why are they jumping in my face? Yeah. It's like, no, it's allowed. It's a jump shot. They can right. do that. You can't splatter them. So now, speaking of Plains Park... We put some money into it. Yep. To so make the, wa the what do you call them? The paths of the Yeah, driveways. the pathways. Uh, so it's been over 22 years since the was built. Uh, there was some settling going on that over the years, there's some settling in the field that were repaired. And then the walkways got to the point where they were, um, you know, sinking also. Um, and it was causing some water issues at the fields. But isn't that expected? Yes. It, um, I mean, it's a dump. Right. It, it was a dump. It stuff's it's breaking down, and it's going to start settling. So it just had to be addressed. We, we went and did one side of the park. Um, the northern side of the park has been done. Is that the side towards Rosenfeld? Or? On no. the opposite side. The other side. Yep. And we'll look to do the other side. Um, we have the parking lots just got paved. Yeah, I want to talk about that next. But yep. Now, you're limited if I remember right, when we did the dump. The depth. The, it was like 18 inches. Of 14, yeah. Of 14? Yeah. And then you hit the barrier and yeah, you're not you, allowed to. you don't to, want to hit the barrier, no. You're not allowed to beat up the barrier? No. So any repairs we do there is mostly top dressing. You know, top dressing so the fields. So it's got to be within yay deep. Right. And that's what happens over the years where we're, we're top dressing the fields. We're changing the, 
we're changing the uh, slopes. The water flow. Right. So you, you don't want to do it too much because now that we have the walkways up to where they should be, you want to try to keep that field draining the way it should be. Do we still have problems with unwanted guests, the geese? Yeah, so I started that program three years ago with um, a, a husband and wife that run a business out of Sharon, and they come and chase them for us with their, they have border collies. So we pay, we pay that um, weekly, and they come and chase the dogs out, I mean the geese out with the dogs, and our numbers of geese have gone substantially down from three years ago. I think he had told me we had eight to ten flocks of geese which was over 700 geese that were coming through those parks and we're down to one or two flocks now with probably a tenth of that so there's probably so what a hundred happens the dogs make it miserable for the geese right. they find another home they or move on yeah but they don't get settled so I just added Louisa onto it because what was happening at Louisa, because people are feeding the geese, which you shouldn't be doing, and we had to put signs up for that. But the original flock at Louisa had no reason to leave, so they would stay there because they would be getting fed. And he explained it to me as, so that flock, so they just had babies there, but when, those, when that flock gets to be big enough to fly and we start chasing them, they'll leave. The other flocks that have been set there, there was like six to ten geese that would just stay there. They'll eventually leave now. Forever? Yes. They've been hanging out there for a few years now. Don't they go south for the winter or something? Well, they pretty much hang out. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, the swans haven't been an issue, but the, the, the swans we have down there, you know, actually they keep their turf, and but the, the geese have been a problem. So now that this flock is getting bigger... He has to keep the dogs on a leash when the babies, because they'll catch the babies because oh. they can't fly. But once those are old enough, which it's been three weeks now, they're already almost full size. Now, the problem with the geese, is it the geese or the geese poop? The poop. So it's not like the geese are attacking people. or Right. They're, they're going where there's nice grass. So the good sign is we must be doing something right that we have nice grass that they want to come and eat it. Um, no, I was thinking like the turkeys. When you see turkeys, they can get very territorial. Yeah. And if you go near them, they can come at you. Right. The geese so, don't do that, do they? No. The, if you're walking towards them, yes. The, the, they, oh, see they feel the, threatened. Right. But the dogs, the dogs, sometimes I'll see the guy pull in the parking lot. He opens a door and the geese start flying. They, they know that this is the The car. dogs come. Yes. This they can recognize the car, and it's amazing because I've seen it happen more than once. It's not like, you know, so however they're figuring it out. But we, you know, long story short, we have less geese than we used to three years ago. So it's helped. And the rest of the park is holding up? Yep. I always worried about the settling, you know. I yeah, we have some work to do in the ball fields. We usually get them ready for the um, the – softball uh, summer tournaments and stuff the middle field we're having trouble with uh, that had some big time drainage issues so we're hoping that that's rectified now that we did the walkways over that we're able to use that middle field but it was always on a slope going uphill it's a bigger field which i have used in the past for men's softball which it's definitely good for that um, but other than that it's not good for the youth uh, use softball we use the two f the far field there's a far field in the northern side and then the one near the playground closer to Rosie they use those two and Little League uses that field also uh, we did some work to the playground added some wood chips you know, do we recently. have issues with Milfordians versus non Milfordians taking up the space no I, I you know it, the words out that we're looking for permits you know so oh. we're, we're, we're given the you know, if you want an organized group needs to get a permit, pick up ball. If a you know group of ten kids are going out and playing a game, they don't need a permit. But if there's someone permitted to use the field, they have to find somewhere else. Uh, it's more for soccer groups, 
um, that are looking to play games on the fields, they need to come get a yeah, permit. We never had a problem if we show up and say, we're scheduled for this field. Right. If there was a group on there, I never knew where they were from, didn't care. Yeah, they'll they, move. They moved. Yeah, and they know. And uh, we've limited that. Uh, I haven't gotten many calls um, about people that aren't supposed to be on the fields. Now, we spent a bunch of money to buy hardtop. Yep. Now, I was down in Rosenfeld for baseball, little kid baseball, and yeah. boy, that parking lot looks nice. Yeah, so we expanded. That's expanded some. There's still some drainage work that is going to get done. Um, but uh, Plains Park was done. Fenal Field was done. I haven't uh, seen that. We still have to top top coat that. We're waiting for the construction workers to get out so we can top coat it. We don't want the trucks driving over the new pavement. So once that's done, that's hopefully the middle of June that that gets done. The one section by the pool, there is some stormwater work and filtration systems that are going to go into that. So we're saving that section. Uh, it's not in terrible condition. They'll patch up what they dug up for the for the uh, pool, but you know, for the new sewer and water lines. But other than that, um, you know, we're hoping those are all going to get done by the end of the month. Now, I drove by Louisa Lake. Yeah. Seems like you've created activity down there. Yeah, so we have, uh, <laughs> well, the disc golf course was put in, oh, a year and a half ago now. So last year, uh, there's, a, there's an app that you can go on to when you go to play. And if you use that app, which about 40% of the people that play, maybe less, uh, use that app that gives you a scorecard and shows you where you are. Um, and you can use that for scoring. Some people, you know, majority of the people don't use it. But for the people that did, we had seven, 7,000 rounds played in one year. and 7,000 rounds? Yeah, and over 12, 1,300 people visited that course in a year. Do you have any feel for how many of those are Milford? Um, well, actually, it does tell you on the app for the people that do the app. So, 34 states, 34 states, and four countries visited that course. The four countries: Germany, United Kingdom, United States, and Canada. I mean, I'm happy for that, but yeah, is there enough room for Milford people? Oh there? yeah, yeah. So it, it, it's not overwhelming where. You can't play. I haven't okay. yet been down there where it's backed up. I, I know yeah. I'm very parochial when it comes down no, to no. this, but, but since the Milford taxpayers paid for yeah. it, oh, there's, there's, I want to make sure there's enough room for yeah, them. Yeah, so there's definitely... Um, it, it's 7,000. So, yeah, 7,000 rounds. And you wouldn't know it like if you go down there. You know, all I hear is good things with people are down there and they see it and they, they're curious because they don't know what it is and they might follow some people playing. And the disc golf community is very welcoming. And I play myself, um, you know, so I'm familiar with it. I just, is it kids or old people like us? All mixed. It can be kids to 10 years old up to adults of 70. And more. this is a golf course with a basket instead of a hole? Yep. That you throw your Frisbee? Yep, so it's the same as regular golf, par 4, par 3. Uh, birdies, eagles, whatever, aces. Huh. Yeah, so a hole in one's an ace. Now, it looked like you expanded, or looks like a dirt part of the parking lot got made. Yeah, so we have we have it opened up for a new paved parking lot. Um, was that the hold in the up, project? Yep, and the hold up for that right now was the drainage, because added drainage has to be because we're expanding it. So we have to attach to the existing drainage. So we had to have some design work done. Um, Liz, Liz mineni has been a, a big help, our en town engineer. She's been a big help with that. Um, and um, the highway department's been a huge help too. But that was part of the budgeted area. Yes. That makes me feel better. Yes, yes. So that's all. Um, we're hoping to get that drainage dug out. The highway department's going to be doing that for us. And then we'll look to, you know, uh, disrupt, disrupt uh, people's days for a day or two to close that parking lot down so we can get it paved. But is that mainly a weekend heavy use, or is it used during the week? It's doing during the week too, after hours. Um, let's say in after work hours, people are going down there four to six to seven oh, o'clock okay. at night. 
it's nice down there at nighttime. It's nice and cool. We have the new pavilion that the um, Lions Club donated. Well, it's good to see that land being used. Yeah. Because that whole Louisa Lake area, when we picked it up. Right. It was like, okay, what are we going to do with it? Right. And um, it's only going to look nicer when we get that parking lot done. You know, that's been a while. We d sort of did the same thing there. We needed to expand the parking lot with the disc golf course being added to allow parking for the trail and the disc golf. And that was part of the plan to open it up so it can be used, but it's not staying like that. It's going to be paved. It's just a matter of planning and getting Well, as done. long as people know that there is a plan to pave it. Yep. You know, that's why you see a lot of projects where they put up the sign. Yeah. Temporary parking until we pay, you know. Right. Because then people can accept it to say, okay, at least I got a place to put my car. Right. And these are all projects that the Parks Department started three years ago. And they're all coming now. They're all coming to a head now altogether, which isn't a bad thing, but it, it makes for, you know, busy time, you know, and uh, – it, it keeps everyone uh, well it beats the, the alternative road. it's better that than have nothing to do right and nothing to get done so you know we're getting it done and then we'll move on to our next three projects whatever they may be hopefully after we fund the high school <laughs> <laughs> any last words for Milford no just um, you know feel free to reach out to me um, I'm pretty easy to reach out to by email jasm at townofmilford.com um, with any questions um, I am you know I am trying to get in the habit of you know not only meeting with you but meeting with the select board to keep them up to date for the people that may be watching the select board meetings uh, I'll be going there at the end of the month um, to discuss some of the things we talked about tonight uh, just to keep them in the loop and um, anyone that may be watching but you know hopefully um, you know in the next three months you'll see a lot a lot more completed in town and hopefully everyone gets out and enjoys it will be exciting come the end of the fall or early winter have you back and talk about what was completed yeah and you know uh, we are, we are, do have a website our website is being upgraded which may not be happening you know instantly um, we're hoping by the end of summer that we have that up and running and that's going to make it easier for everyone to view and get permits and, you know, view some of the parks. We'll have photos and everything else from the different areas that we take care of. Well, it's a big difference from when 30 years ago we were fighting over what field access we could get and getting the grass cut and getting lines painted. Seems like we've come a long, long way. Yeah. Thank you. Nice. Thanks. And to all of our six loyal viewers, Get out and use the facilities. I mean, I still have great memories of going with the kids with a blanket down a Fino f field pool and just hanging out with a picnic basket. Going to Plains Park, playing soccer, watching lacrosse. There's so much going on. And as always, I thank you for joining us. May God bless. May tomorrow be a better day than today. Good night.